this whole thing is designed to take this little horse and enjoy the journey. I had sworn off doing any more Mustangs until this program came up. I actually have trained other Mustangs in the past, and I had actually said I was going to do no more of them because I got injured by one. But part of why I wanted to be involved in this program is that I believe in spaying these fillies and managing the wild Mustangs. These horses can be used in so many different disciplines that there is no reason that we shouldn't protect what we already have and use the ones that we can. The Wild Spade Philly Futurity is essentially two-year-old Mustangs that have been spayed and collected off BLM lands, and they were sold to trainers at the Reno Snapple Bit Futurity last year, and those trainers have one year to get their Mustangs ready for a, a cow horse Futurity, which involves three events. It's raining, fence work and herd work. And then those horses will be shown and showcased this coming September in their own fraternity, so they're not competing against quarter horses, they're just competing against the other Mustangs in the fraternity. They're certainly not bred like our quarter horses are, so it was interesting to me to get to do it on our own playing field. I always wanted to try to show one again, but it's so hard to take one and go show against the ones that are bred the way are these days. When I found out we'd just be competing against each other in the same level playing field, I jumped at it where I didn't have to go show against those horses actually bred to do solely this. <laughs> then it's like, oh, here's my chance to go do it again. first time I got on her, she blew up and bucked so hard to have a night latch, which is, you know, a handle on the bronc saddle, and my arm was sore for a month He's and a half. He's still complaining, yeah, some days he'll, we'll go rope and he'll be, man, my arm's still sore from hauling. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla just started working for her, and Tammy had said, don't get on her till we're home in case something happens, and I thought, oh, I'm going to get on her, Kayla's here, if something, she can call the <laughs> ambulance. So I get on her and she blows out, I mean she bucks really hard for a really long time and I'm dying trying to stay on and she's laughing, she just thinks it's an everyday thing around here and doesn't realize it. <laughs> well how I'm struggling and I was wanting her to quit so I can get off and, <laughs> and the tears run out of my eyes and trying to stay on. No, so I asked her, I said, so how did it go? She said, oh she bucked with him. Like did she buck a lot? Well yeah she bucked pretty good and she was like, no big deal. And so then when I get home and I say something to Lance, he's like, Oh man, it was, she was really bucking. It was all, didn't you talk to Kayla? I'm like, yeah, but she seemed like it was okay. <laughs> yeah, just another day at the ranch. <laughs> I've ridden, I don't know, 20 or 30 Mustangs. First horse I ever showed was a Mustang and he was the brokest thing I ever trained and he could run stop huge. Couldn't turn around very fast, but he could run and stop huge and he was a cow horse now. <laughs> I've rode a lot of them that have gone on to be various pleasure horses, the ranch horses, and have had a lot of success in going on and doing well. Early in my career when I was riding a lot of them, and back then wild horses had a real bad reputation, especially with all the cowboys and stuff. The one I showed, I liked him so much that I kind of just wanted to prove to everybody, you know, my, my dad and family included, because they're ranchers, you know, and I think they ended up having four or five over the years. The one I showed, years ago um, was really wild too really wild and she is a lot like he was where he got ended up getting really attached to me in the beginning you couldn't get near that right side hard getting near her at all anyways very close um i just pulled the halter off of her probably a month ago or a month and a half ago but the rope i took off but you i kept the halter on her and i'd just go snap it in but i you know it was just too hard to you couldn't get up close enough to get your arms wrapped around her or anything to put the halter on. As wild as she was, she would never strike in the beginning. She was really good there. She would kick, you know, at something that got real 
close to her hind end, especially on that right side. And, you know, slowly with the work and the groundwork and the restraint work, the stuff I done have, don't do a whole lot of anymore when you get these gentle yearlings in that we start now, but actually got her where I could get on her and she blew up and bucked so hard, I rode her. She didn't get me bucked off, but it, it was everything I could do to, and she was good at it and it, I was just clinging and finally, I think I rode her two times and then I decided, well, I have to do something else. She bucked so hard that I didn't want to have to do it again, so I took a step backwards and I packed her. I didn't pack her off the place. I put a pack saddle on her and hung um, bags of sand off of her and run around that round crowd and she didn't like that very much. And that's the only time she ever struck at anything. I did it for two weeks and then finally she just changed drastically because of my back issues. This year I had a young kid come over and get on all my yearlings for me when I started them. I had him get back on her. She never did a thing again. After the packing her, she's still snorting real touchy on the ground and stuff, but never bucked again. This has been the biggest help. Um, Susie loving on her like that is, you know, with 30 head of horses, I don't have time to sit there and, and it's good for her. And Susie does this with all of them, but she doesn't spoil them. She'll make them mind if they're doing stuff that she knows I won't like, but still they, they need to be loved on because in, in our deal, training them, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to get them broke and ask them as much as we can get out of them to get them to a certain level. And sometimes they don't get loved on enough. <laughs> Oh baby, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew she was my pick. I, I knew by watching them that she was not going to be the gentlest one, that she would take more time than some of the others. But I figured about once I got her, she um, physically had the attributes that I needed because we have to compete in the cow horse event. <laughs> one thing you never know what you're going to get with these guys is, you know, as wild as she was, I didn't know if I would get one that you'd have to lope for two hours to go show. <laughs> and this mare is not that way at all. She got a lot of mental stock to her. Little things that we look for in our show prospects. <laughs> she does, and even though she's not bred to be that way, she does it. Now I'm gonna bring in a fresh bunch of cattle I just got in. Usually we get pretty wild cattle and it takes me few days to get them to settle before we can work them on the broker horses and so I've been using Holly here to settle these cattle. Gets her used to driving cattle, gets her used to being around a herd of cattle and in the middle of a herd of cattle, which she'll have to do when she's showing out of the herd work in Reno at the end of September. That's actually something I thought about is keeping her as a turn horse because you go where as a turn horse to take the shows because you need one pretty handy at the shows and they get pretty famous doing that. She's walking around, she's as good as any older broke horse. So it just took a little while longer than I thought, but we're good now. Now it's just about how fancy we can make her. And win that 25,000. <laughs> Pretty nice horse, <laughs> regardless of what she is. Fox and the Rocks has a fan base. She is very popular in the penning and sorting world in the Northwest right now. We have approximately 30 people that are on board to go to the Snaffle Bit to watch her. They watch Facebook. They're very involved in watching the other Mustangs now also. So I think it's a great thing that we've got a new group of people watching the Cow Horse World. As far as this competition, where we're gonna have a year to make a cow horse, and then go show in the snap a bit futurity versus the 100 day challenges, the Mustang makeovers. There's quite a difference. 
there's a lot of guys that are bringing in a very finished product into these 100 day challenges, but there's not a set end goal. The freestyle is a big part of it. So they get to decide whatever they want to do. And with this event, they all have to go in there and rain. They all have to go in there and cut. They all have to go in there and take a count on the fence. Cow horse is a very difficult event as you're requiring a lot out of a horse. There's three different things that they have to learn and so those horses get pretty well trained. They have a good foundation, they have a lot of skills that they can take on to another job if their owner wanted them to. I think it just gives them a good solid foundation and exposes them to a lot. Thank you Lance. Lance Johnston, can you see me Pops? For me it's just like any horse putting them in the cow horse deal. You can go afterwards so many different directions with them. I've sent horses that went off to be big time barrel horses. She can go lots of different places. You can be broke enough to go be a team sorter, team pinner, can be a barrel horse, can be a rope horse. She's got a lot of natural stop and probably make a great heel horse down the road. Here shortly, just when I get her a little bit broker, I'm gonna start swinging rope off of her. So when I get invited to Brandon's, I'm gonna take her and definitely make a great ranch horse because these horses are raised outside and I'm um, used to traveling in tough country. I was raised on a cattle ranch that got really tough country and that's why those Mustangs were so good. And my dad ended up, after he saw me riding them and getting them over the years, he liked them, you know, because they have to be able to crawl around like mountain goats where our ranch is. I heard this quote and it was a trainer who said it. He heard that an artist said, it's that painting that creates the seed for the next painting. And that's the way I look at this program. You blow the aisle and you don't let her do that. She just sits there and like, hello, like. She was the, in the bottom two of the horses I would have picked. Yeah, I, I didn't pick her. <laughs> Honestly, I just knew that it was gonna be worth it no matter what. <laughs> I had a couple other horses picked out. Of course, those horses sold for the most. She was actually pulled from the initial auction because she was smaller and then the auction was going so well. All 10 horses sold. They decided to, you know, add the last two alternate horses at the end with the crowd reaction saying basically give us more. Come on. And I was like, I have to have that horse. Like I just like have to do this. I actually called my dad mid-auction because they were selling so high. Good girl. I called him asking for the money when I didn't need the money. <laughs> I think I was more calling for approval. He basically just told me he wished he'd taken more risks in his life and just go for it. So I did, and I just kept betting, and then I won her, and I didn't really believe I won the bid at first. I shot up, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I got this horse, and like I was ecstatic. I was mostly concerned about her size, but I'm happy I got her. I think I got one of the best ones, mentally and overall, like, the whole picture, I think she's a cool horse. Got involved with Mustangs in 2008. My mom actually started the Mustang and Youth Program for Washington State, and we now work with youth in the whole region. So we pull from Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, and do a 100-day program with kids and Mustangs. They're kind of my passion now. I think there's 17 horses here right now and all but two are Mustangs. I was competing at the Extreme Mustang Makeover in Monroe, Washington and overheard one of the BLM employees talking to one of the other trainers. And I kind of piped in and I said, what, what is this program? And so I researched it and here we are. I've gotten 
lot of negative remarks. I recently went to Road to the Horse and was approached by a very well-known clinician that said, how can I expect a horse that is not bred for this job and has half the training time, only a year, to compete in an event where horses are bred for the job and have two years to train? And I was like, well, why not? You know, I basically told him, I like to have the deck stacked against me and these horses are amazing and they have a lot of tart. They may not be the best stoppers or turn as hard and fast as the ones bred to do the job, but they're gonna try. They're not gonna tell you no. She gives me her best. She's kind, she's funny, she's always into everything. Like, she's got a sense of humor. She's just a really nice little horse. <clears throat> I would say her weakness is she's lazy. She doesn't really have a gas pedal. She'd rather just be a trail <laughs> horse. At this point, the cow's all outrun her. Even when she's full throttle, she has a hard time keeping up. But I know that she's gonna give it her all, so I know that she'll be right there with me. Nope, nope. My goal would be to find that fifth and sixth gear <laughs> that she's got in her somewhere and use her as a Mustang ambassador for Rain Cow. So Zane's done some Mustangs before and kind of knows where I'm coming from, and so when I showed up, he basically told me that I need to like just practice the cow work. He's like, the raining won't be a problem because that's what I've done the most of, but just practice the cow work and boy, it shows me how much I have to learn, but I'm open to learning. So it's like, I just want to push myself. <laughs> My golly. I uh. don't think he realized how broke she was and I was loafing around. He's like, well, go ahead and ask her to stop and see what she does. And I just sat down and she just, parked her butt in the dirt, and he just kind of was like, oh, <laughs> I guess she can stop. Good girl. It was great to be there, and it was fun to chat with him and pick his brain, and I enjoyed going. It was a really cool experience that he let me go. A lot of people say, oh, a horse is a horse, but I really think that these horses have something special that yeah, you just can't explain it. I don't know. It's going to make me cry. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I saw her promotional picture, I mean, she has like wrinkles, like all over her face. Like she looks like she's 100 years old. And it just made me laugh. And it's like, that horse isn't even cute. And now that I, she's a huge part of my life, my four-year-old thinks she's her horse. So <laughs> I don't really see her going anywhere. She's a special horse. And I'm really just thrilled that I have her. <laughs> I have been around spayed horses before. My dad's actually a vet. I do think that spaying is certainly a, a good management technique, but I think you have to look at all management techniques as a whole, and spaying being one of those in this process of managing our wild horse herd populations in order to make sure that the goal's met for everybody in terms of you know, our, our emotional responses and our rangeland needs and working with our cattle ranchers and everything. I think spaying's the one piece that can definitely help us achieve that goal. I feel like the spaying of Billy is a good idea, especially rather than using the drugs that have been used because those mares still come into heat. To me, it's just bad management to have those mares being bred by those stallions continually. Every month they're getting bred. There can be injuries. I just feel like the Spain, the Phillies, is the best way to keep the numbers down where it's manageable. I think spaying, in terms of how it affects herd dynamics, there's always this hierarchy, especially with mares. Once there's a lead mare, there's always a lead mare who's in charge. And a lot of these horses, depending on when you spay them, going back into that herd environment isn't necessarily going to change a dynamic that's already set. They're kind of just another member of that herd without necessarily having to reassert dominance that's already been established by other horses. An older mare or a horse that's been injured or crippled, they're not in their peak anymore. In that situation, those horses aren't in a dominant position already. All you're doing is taking a horse that's probably already on the low on the pecking order and just not allowing them to reproduce anymore and create population control issues and range management issues. But it really doesn't change the herd dynamics. 
Protect the Harvest is about animal welfare and making sure that it's about the animal. And these horses in particular, they're a part of American history. And keeping them around is really important, you know, especially to somebody like me where they're such a big part of my life. And I feel like they're a symbol of the Old West. I've been around this little mare, and I mean, we got a ways to go, but you know, I, I, I'd rather train horses I like than not, than not to train at all, you know. But I, I often said, you know, and I'm just, just me talking out loud, is like, boy, what if I really love this little mare? There's. No, huh? Yes. 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 Yes, but I'm smiling like, but Charlotte, I can't get a, another you. She settled down a whole bunch and just got relaxed. When they first get here, no matter how they're bred or how they look or whatever, they're all the same horse to me. This mare, uh, she does what I call hunt the fences. When I first got her, she was like, where's the way out? And every once in a while now, when I train on her, you'll hear me say, stay in the pen. Stay in the pen means focus on me. She's starting to be a horse, what we call horses, once we get them kind of comfortable in the stall. Oh, back. Give them a fair shot to get used to the program, know what we're asking, and then get the trust built. My dad was into teams, and every once in a while, he would get uh, a horse or a mule to be trained to be a team horse or whatever. One of my older brothers who I learned a lot from, I, I was always fascinated with some of the things he could do with a team of horses and mules, uh, whether it was on the ground or in the wagon or whatever, and it was just like, boy, I want to do that. Come on. Come on. a girl. Let's go. I think she's kind of a smart mare, real good. She has good vision back. She's aware of what's going on around her. And I think she has a good sense of what I call independence. She doesn't have to be with a, a group of horses to be happy and to be comfortable. And uh, I, I think that independence is gonna uh, play a big role later on. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, you getting that idea. You're getting my idea. Okay, my idea becomes yours. Then we become a team. Charlotte was a... A horse that was kind of cow kick, what we call cow kick, when she first was introduced to us in this program. At a girl. So we'll do that until we make sure they're comfortable. So we just reinforce it over and over. Uh, I love to sack a horse out and just get them comfortable where they buy it, where they trust it, and they trust me. When I first did this with Charlotte, she didn't know me, but now she trusts me. Horses blow into each other's nose, so I blow into hers, and so we get to know each other. I don't want it to be a joke. I want it to be comfortable. When you're first coming up in this business as a young trainer, you don't know anything. And I don't mean to be rude when I say that, but I can say that because I knew a lot, but I didn't know anything. Our plan is for our son who's a horseman and he's aspiring to be a future trainer. So it was like, this is an easy route to get to the show pit. And he likes being in there. So if not him, someone else, maybe Carmen, maybe me, who knows? Come on, come on, friend. Come on, friend. Come on, come on. And my first word that comes to mind is she's been fun. The second one is exciting. When I get a new horse in, I think the day that I can't have fun with a horse and I am not excited about training them, I don't want to train no more. I'm happy with that. I'm telling her, you are figuring it out. I'm liking it. At a girl, Miss Charlotte. At a girl, Miss Charlotte. One of my goals is I know there's a show involved and stuff like that, but I always say, when this is all said and done, what kind of horse will I have? I want a horse that anybody would like and love.
people fall in love with the story of the Mustang. And they say, I want to save one. I want to help one. And so they adopt one, right? It's $125. You get to come home with a horse today, right? <laughs> now what do I do with him? I think people it misunderstand wild. They think of their little two-year-old in the back pasture that hasn't really been handled much, but they can go out and feed it a treat. And then they get a wild horse and it's busting back and forth and the you know the panel's trying to get out of the pen and it's like a big reality check. So that becomes a problem. So then they realize this is a wild horse. Even the yearlings, you know, they're five, 600 pounds. They can kill you like that. <laughs> People wind up in a bad situation and then what do I do with it? And then if they do wind up managing to keep it for the year, now they own it. It doesn't have the option of going back to the pens. So then it's just caught in a vicious cycle. To find people that have the experience to handle those, and there's, there's lots of trainers that, that will take them and handle them, but people don't have the funds to continue to pay the training on those horses. Our three strikers, most of them end up in that process, usually of no fault of their own. He's got a mind just like any other animal. So with, with the horse that I got, he was adopted like any of these other ones. The people that get him, they didn't have the skill set to handle a wild horse, and when they decided to start handling, he struck one of the owners in the head, and so they turned him back in. He was in that situation really of no fault of his own, uneducated people handling him. So then he gets adopted out again, he goes through the TIP program. And he did good there, but he still showed some aggressive tendencies, so he didn't get adopted, so he went back. So that's, that automatically becomes his second time out. And then so another lady took him on his third try. And he was big by this point, he's five years old, he hasn't been started. He was a handful and, and he still is, you know, big strong Mustang, you know. But when you handle him in the right manner and you've built that trust with him, he's one of the best riding horses I've got. He does everything. You can get a Mustang to do about anything you want for a yeah. cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love cookies. You've explored that. I have. Yeah. I was not a cookie man until I got my Mustang. <laughs> Actually, I, I figured she was going to be one of the more wild ones, but I, I thought that it wouldn't take me so long. And I don't know if because it had been so long, if I just forgot, just so used to the domesticated horses, or maybe I was overconfident or... Uh, <laughs> I think we all were overconfident, yeah. going, we've had Mustangs before, this is going to yeah. be big. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I like to see these horses being trained by a trainer and started correctly right from the beginning is because once a horse has found those bad attitudes or has some issues, to retrain that is hard. If they've been one that has some bad training in the beginning, that's always gonna come back. And I hate to see people get hurt. You get the right handling done with them when they're younger so that they become more like a domestic horse, then you're ahead of the game. So I'd say the first thing you do, go adopt you a yearling coming two year old, put him in training for four months. Then you've got a horse that you can manage and handle and ride and have a successful partner. There's really no particular rhyme or reason as to why I picked Gypsy. I had heard about the Wild Spade Philly fraternity on Facebook and it piqued my interest because I had been interested in doing the Mustang makeover and it fit into the confines of my program and I'm interested in the issues around Mustangs anyway. So we decided to watch the sale and we were online. We, were, we decided yeah, to watch the sale but we happen to have a bid number. Yeah, <laughs> we were just watching with the bid number. Just um, in case. <laughs> you never know. And as they were in the pen running, we were determining whether we thought they moved well and if they were worth the, the price they were going for. And it just wound up that I was like, I thought Gypsy moved well and the price was right and I just bought her. And then 45 minutes later, we had to drive to Reno. I called a friend to see if she could you know, feed and water them for till we got there. And she goes, you bought one of those Mustangs? I was like, yeah. She goes, which one did you get? And I told her and she goes, oh my God. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, she goes, you better be careful. <laughs> it's like, well, that's good. <laughs> the reasons why I decided to do this really more about the horse than myself, because I am a non-pro. There's no gain in this for me professionally. There's gain for me personally. and growing as a person and kind of growing with my riding and one of my goals doing this was kind of to push myself. I know I'm up against some really 
good trainers. So, but I'm just trying to focus on doing the best by her and getting her as far as I can. Your mane is out of control today. Probably the biggest challenge with her was just getting her trust, which I, I imagine it's the same thing for a lot of people with Mustangs. She was pretty defensive. She was definitely on alert and it took a while for me to get past that part. She was a little bit food aggressive and some things like that, lunging at you and trying to turn and kick you, that sort of thing. Stuff that I wouldn't find shocking for a horse that's been in the wild their whole life. And she didn't know who I was. She's not anymore by any means. That subsided pretty quick, but I was trying to find times where I could interact with her because I didn't have a line on her. Are you full of piss and vinegar today? Yes. <laughs> this is actually something we're working through. <laughs> like, I spent a lot of time just hanging out with her, honestly. The first week and a half that she was here, she was in the round pen. She had a halter, but no lead, so I couldn't physically force her to come near me. I just kind of waited her out. I think on day three, she came up to me and sniffed me a little and then left. And a friend of ours that does Mustang makeovers suggested alfalfa cubes, <laughs> which I am not a treat person. My horses don't get treats but eventually I gave her the alfalfa cubes and her just kind of having to come up and she got some sort of reward out of it really helped a lot. But I just spent a lot of time just like working around her, getting her to face me and just taking it slow and not making her feel pressured to do anything in particular. But once I kind of got past that point of her feeling confident in me and that there was a mutual respect, she was really easy to deal with after that. She's got really cool movement. She's got a lot of knee action and she's forward. She's naturally pretty balanced and she gets her leads really nicely. I could see her doing the Western dressage. So after the foundation she'll have here, I think she could easily go do stock horse and compete at that level. Maybe not the cow horse level, but that's tough competition. So I think she's quiet enough to do the trail stuff. But even though like, I feel like we get along real well, she's pretty aloof. <laughs> I've dealt with Mustangs and I've dealt with others in the past and they're all a little bit different but a lot of them tend to get more attached to that first person that they interact with and I think she likes me but I can't really tell. <laughs> I like to think she does. <laughs> so <laughs> You are so good. The first time that I called her somewhere I didn't really have any plans of riding her. I just wanted to get her out. And you would have thought I'd been hauling her her whole life. It was the first time I'd hard tied her too. So I was really pleasantly surprised by that. And in general, she surprised me in her confidence going out. You know, I was kind of a little bit concerned that when we started riding out that she would be nervous or just feel a little bit more freedom and just want to dump me and go. But she didn't. She was very attentive to me. We did everything together. and. She stayed with me 100% and we rode out quite a bit and she always was really good. She's been great, really. I've been very pleasantly surprised. My goal is just to do right by her and get her to be the most solid horse I can by September. And if I did sell her, it would give me an opportunity to get another one and help that horse. But sometimes I have these moments where I'm like, you know, she may only be a one person horse and I need to keep her and, you know. Like all the main. If I feel like she's to that point where she can move on to somebody else, then I'll sell her. So if I feel like she's not, I might reconsider. But she's shown me so far that she's very able to adapt. We also have a yard full of one, <laughs> one person horses. Yeah. We've, we've got a lot of one person horses. So. <laughs>
that she would actually hide behind the one tree in the pen. And I keep that rope now next to her stall. So every day when I put her halter on, it reminds me how far this horse has come because it's not all about just where we're going with this competition. It's more to me about how far she's come. I thought she'd be the easiest to train. I'm not sure that she's been the absolute easiest. <laughs> but I liked her looks too. She had some decent feet on her. She just looked like she was going to build into a nice horse. I got it. All right. I'm happy with where Fox is. It's not very long to get to where we need to be. So I get a little bit nervous about only as long as we have to make what we're making but I'm happy with where she is. I feel like she's right in line where she needs to be at this point. Just run her around a few minutes. There were days she would come in and I'd want to go hide. <laughs> and there were days she'd come skipping, you know, we accomplished this today, we accomplished that, we did great, we did great. She had to really reach deep down inside of herself and start with this filly and get her going. Not that she doesn't with her other horses, but it, it's been fun. And, it's been hard watching her because she's been out here in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> she's like our baby. <laughs> she's like our first child. <laughs> See, he gets emotional about her too. There's something about this horse. <laughs> The offside on her has been really tough. She doesn't want you on the right side of her very much. She's getting way better, but that took a lot of time. My biggest problem with her has been forward motion. So on our spins, you know, she's starting to lock down a foot spinning a step or two. And I feel like she's kind of got it, but we need a little more forward. And that's the same as for our stops and you know our rundowns. We need forward motion. And so I'm having to create a little fire in her. I would rather create that fire than have to pull her way back. She's a pretty laid back little horse. Probably the most challenging thing with her is she was very evasive. Although she was always looking in at somebody, she didn't want to engage with things. That's the best part and it took a long time to get that with her and to get the trust. I should leave about half of them. Once she started engaging with the cattle, she started engaging with other people too. It was interesting that way. It kind of showed she found some confidence through the cattle, I believe. This is her favorite part. <laughs> We've been hauling her as many places as we can. She gets to go hang out at Team Pennings and Sortings and hear all the noises, see the cattle moving, horses running in the arena, lots of noise. I ride her a little bit, you know, just in the arena. From the beginning, she has stood there and just been so good and just takes it all in and hangs out all day with us. Might take a little bit. She's not as warmed up as I usually have her. She actually laid down in her stall. You know, I have a lot of young horses that never act as relaxed at new events as she has. I'm trying to get some circles. And we often say it's just so humbling that she's come this far. I haven't done that yet. I felt today with the wind and the situation, she was a little pushier than normal. A little pushier on her stops. Usually her stops are coming through a little better but her focus was a little bit gone with the activity today. She's generally a bit more focused. I'm awestruck every day looking back to where she came from. She was <laughs> hiding behind that tree at the end of September. And it's been amazing watching them grow together. Our first attempt at circles. I think that this little horse has taught me a lot about patience, lots. And just a horse that tries so hard, you just have to appreciate it. And so she's probably taught me some appreciation too. This has been really fun for us. It's something that we can do together and 
he encourages me and that's the biggest thing with horses, have fun with them. My education has been in environmental sciences and natural resource management, um, specifically related to agriculture and animal agriculture. For me, I think the management side of things is really important. And even if you took you know, ranchers out of it, you still have an issue with overgrazing with the wild horses and mustangs. So, we need to find some sort of management techniques that are viable for our rangelands, viable for the horse populations, and viable from a humanitarian perspective. That being said, there's a lot of options for that, but you know, there's a lot of emotions behind that for people, and I think that it still has to remain realistic as far as what our rangelands can handle and what the horse population should be. Technically, they are still an invasive species, <laughs> even though they are wild in the United States, and they have been for a really long time. They aren't native, so we have to take that into account and in how the ecosystem is able to compensate for them. I feel like they're very misunderstood, and they get a bad rap because people consider them garbage and thrown away horses that don't deserve a place in anybody's barn. Then when I ride and people see my horses and they're shocked that they're Mustangs. When we got to Reno and we actually got to see her in the pen, I was really surprised with how big she actually was and how much bone and foot that she had underneath her. She was actually built pretty well, pretty balanced. You often hear that they're the coyotes of the range in horse form and that they're not built well and don't have the ability to really go do anything. But it's kind of changed my mind about that and made me more open-minded to where maybe these horses are usable more so than they get credit for. With a lot of these horses, you just have to take the time to pick one that fits the athletic ability that you need to have. You just have to give them the opportunity. Abilena, or Salson's Painted Pawnee, was not in my little list of select horses, but she was the one I ended up buying, and I wouldn't trade her for anything. She was a wily little thing, and I, I put her in my indoor arena and basically let her eat, sleep, and drink right there while I was training. And that first day, so I had one of my other mares I got on, just kind of give her a little confidence and let her mother up to her a little bit and I'd step off and she'd run to the end of the arena. I think I roped her to catch her the first day and then I was saddling her by the end of the day. But she just, she kind of came around and then when I went to get on her, I didn't know what I'd get. And when I got up on top of her, she was like, you're meant to be here. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so we just kind of hit it off from day one. I could tell she was kind of special. Yeah. My background is starting colts and ranch horses. I do a lot with trail riding horses and the performance horse industry is a whole new thing for me. So it's been a big goal of mine, and I'm super excited to be on my way to my first big cow horse show. Open up your left hand just a little bit more, Taylor, so she's What's got that? a spot. Open up your left hand just a little bit more so she can lead around there a little bit, softer. There you go. <laughs> I met Taylor yep. at the two-day colt starting events. I judged him, and we kind of built a relationship there and he wanted to get one of these fillies and I said sounds like a good idea and then I get a phone call that hey I got one now what do I do <laughs> so I've been happy to help him get on this journey that's her one 
tricky spot. Yeah. And she's so smart. <laughs> she anticipates right? everything. She's like, oh, we're counter So yeah, so rather than can't. starting right off in your counter canner in the counter bend, bend that head to the inside. Mm -hmm. Let her get that body started around. And remember, you want to arc that body with that inside leg as you're in that counter canner, mm -hmm. even though you're going to be over here, and then come back to that shoulder in that arc. Yeah. Aside from me just having to learn and, and get better at the performance aspects of her training, Abilene has taught me tons. For one, just because she's got so much heart and so much try and so much willingness and she's also kind of hard-headed, you, you have to have that partnership effect in place and she's kind of made that really, really apparent. And I've worked Mustangs before, so I know it's very important to make that connection and have that partnership going. Then I'm gonna have her in training for the whole year till Reno uh, comes back around in September. And that's been a big thing for me to learn that now that I'm stepping into the performance horse world, it's not necessarily something new every single day like starting a colt. I had done everything that was in my comfort zone and then I realized, wow, I'm, I'm done colt starting. Now I've got to make a performance horse. Taylor has such a strong worth ethic that I think probably one of the hardest things was teaching me when to quit. When to just slow down and stop for the day and then, and then do less in smaller burst. It's kind of helped my horsemanship because I haven't really done the yeah. performance level training. And so when, you know, Kyle's coaching me through working on a spin or stop or whatever, it's helped me go on some of my well-bred quarter horses and stuff and go, wow, this is a whole lot easier. It's been super fun. The turnaround's been our biggest thing. And I've, I've struggled with it before, so I kind of come on to this project and we're having to work on a reigning turnaround and have them turn good on a cow, two different things. So that's been like something huge that we've gotten to work through and it's coming along. She's got tons of try, tons of try. She never quit. She's pretty athletic for most of the Mustangs that I've gotten to ride. I mean, she's tough as nails. First 30, 60 days, I got her out on the trail quite a bit, and she's been on some three, four hour rides. Keeps them happier if you change it up every now and then. That's kind of the other part of my goal with her, just make sure she's good all around using horse. <laughs> now I think we're done. <laughs> Good job. Oh, good girl. That actually went better than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> I'm going to buy you pizza for that one. <laughs> one thing about it, when he's done, she'll be good and gentle and safe and broke. She'll do, she'll do so many things. Yeah, roping the dummy, that's easy. Carrying the dummy, now that's... <laughs> I think her mind is what's going to get her there because so far she showed that if, if we slow down and we make the right steps with her that she's learned to do things correct. I'm kind of in a groove now. <laughs> so now I, you're in the fine tuning. So. Yeah, exactly. And I'm having fun <laughs> and I understand it a little bit more. It, it's kind of new every day for me from now till the competition. Oh, it's too bad. I'm excited about running into guys that I've been watching on YouTube and following on Facebook and I'm super excited about going to Reno. Like giving hugs. I know you like giving her hugs. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a choice. Yeah. Good. Good. I am absolutely wanting to do this again. Yeah, I wouldn't even hesitate to take two home if I if the right horses, you know, came through and. The price they was right. I know, they're like, what is it? <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. I would definitely take on another one of these Mustangs. I had sponsors for this one. I would be happy to train one for somebody for this event. I'd love to be able to buy another Spade Philly. I'll definitely be setting aside a chunk of change and trying to do it again if I can. I think we've showed how versatile they can be with the 100 day events and how trainable they are. So it's going to be really cool to kind of show how finished we can actually get these guys. So far it's been a good experience and I'm supportive of it and I, I kind of hope she does it again. 
You know, I put a lot of thought into that to give another horse an opportunity to have another job and move forward in life and help reduce herd populations and show people that these horses are very usable and I know I'm up against some really good people. And I'll probably have to feel it out that Friday after we show and see whether I have the mental fortitude to do it again. <laughs> yes, I'll do it again. Like she said, it kind of takes us back. When she was talking, <laughs> takes us back to when we were kids, you know. It's not the same as when you're in your 20s trying to tame a Mustang. <laughs> no, but it makes you feel a little young again doing it. <laughs> Good effort. I think it's a huge benefit for the horse world because we say we like and love horses. Well, here's your chance. I'm looking so forward to Reno. <laughs> I can't wait.